Hello and welcome once again to our first tutorial of 2022 and today we're going to expand on our tutorial for hair or fair um, within Blender. I have here a small model that I made of a teddy bear and I would want to set it up for a very nice and cute fair around it. Plus maybe we'll, we'll learn one or few things along the way. So first uh, if we take a closer look, if I go to my edit mode, it's basically a model that has been mirrored. And basically, I just use booleans with UV spheres, cylinder, and a cube, modeled it and uh, sculpted a bit of it to get this uh, result. Plus, um, I remeshed it to get the polygons to um, not be triangulated. Or to at least be a bit more regular so that's uh, about the model that we have for here so <clears throat> what we're going to do is um first we're going to apply texture painting to our model we're going to paint over our model to be able to give it some color and then drive the color to give the, the fur or the hair color that we want our teddy bear to have so um, the way to go about texture painting is we will first have to create an image file for our model. So the way we do it is when all the polygons are selected, I'll go to new and what I'll do is um, I'll give it a, a name, teddy bear, teddy bear, yeah, let's just call this text texture. And I'll go OK. So what I'll also do is I'll unwrap the UVs. So now that we have set up our texture file, we will connect that with our material. And what we'll do is we'll switch over to this, create a new material for the teddy bear name. We'll switch over to our shader editor and we'll call in our image texture. So what we'll do now is we'll load the teddy bear text and connect to our base color. So now we are ready to now paint. So what I'll do is that I'll go over to my texture paint and what we would do over here is we would rather start painting directly and we see the end results on our UVs. So for my color, I would go with a beige, beige color, increase saturation just a tiny bit, and we'll give it a, a bit of red. Okay, so we are good to go and I'll increase my brush size to about 80 so we can paint on larger areas. So what we do is whatever we paint, we affect the mirrored parts also. So when I zoom in, I would go to all around Go to the bottom. me and if we are uh, oh oh yeah I'll just paint this area and the head so we have our teddy bear so um <laughs> For our teddy bear, I would want to 
give a different color for the snouts and the area around the eyes what i'll do is just change the color and increase this or decrease the saturation give it a much more brighter look and then this start painting use the brush size a bit and switch over to the front view so i have a better Yeah, and work on the nose and the mouth area. For the hands, we'll also change the color of the hooks. This area is a little bit off. That just paint a teddy bear. Okay, for the paw area, I'll reduce the brush size a bit. Oops. my brush size a bit oops and you can see we've perfected this area so what I'll do is um, I'll go back to my color picker and pick the original color that we use so we can paint it back up again. And then let me just check to see if there are other areas where, okay, I think with the four, yeah, okay. So depending on how you want the end result to be, you can be very uh, precise about how to paint over. And I'll come over to the bottom area. the lighter color that we went in for and we'll go with that one too so my size to 60 oops okay So let me just okay. You can see it's affected the edges around there. So I'm gonna pick my color again and just make sure every area is clean and good to go. So <clears throat> with my teddy bear painted, go back to our layout view and we have. Uh, a basic color setup for our teddy bear ready to apply the fur. Now, um, to do so, what we're going to do is switch over to our particle properties, add new, and let's just call this teddy bear fur. And we'll switch over to fair particles. So, as you may notice, if you are working on a mirrored model, 
by getting to use the mirror modifier what we normally want to do is to be able to affect both the original and the mirrored side also so to do that under the emission and source we have used modifier stack and what that does is it would apply the air particles over both the modified modifier model and the um, original model also so one thing we want to change is our hair length which is way too long so we make this 2.5 and we maintain the number of emissions to a thousand we don't want to you know tax our computer with too much uh, lag so we'll leave it at a uh, thousand and we'll turn on advanced so with advanced what we will do is that um it opens up some few settings over here so this would give the brownian 0 0.05 or make it 0 0.025 so what this does is that um it's you know when you first set up your hair particles the hair lines are all straight which it kind of looks like you know a, a bit more unrealistic so to give it some randomness here is one feature that normally helps to give you that randomness which is the brownian you can play along with the drag and the dump but i think the brownian will serve our purpose also we'll come down to our path we'll set up this spline and turn up the steps to about four this helps um, bring up more uh, detail when we finally set it up for rendering for children uh, each uh, hair or each follicle that is displayed there should be some children around it and you can set the amount per each follicle over here so if let's say we add a thousand on the display it will add extra 10 to each uh, point that we have here so this is for the normal viewport so to add a 10 so if i go to none you realized it's just maybe these hair particles that you see but once we turn it on see it, it adds a bit more so we set it to 10 since uh, for our display we'll just leave it at 10 and the render amount we will also leave it at 100 so what that is going to do is that when we hit the render that is going to add all these extra air particles to the original particles that we've set up which is a uh, thousand over here so that will help to um, give it a bit more uh mess and help with um rendering so that you don't find you know the hairs in clumps okay so once that is done the next feature we will want to play with is our roughness now with a roughness here's where we can actually get some bit of more detail without actually taxing our machine to lag too much so with the uniform i like to set it at 0 0.2 and the size of 0 0.01 the endpoint 0 0.1 and the shape will leave at one so what this is going to do is it's going to give you some level of randomness and also the count also increases but we want to make sure we don't tax the computer too much because when you increase the number of particles that's what's going to really slow down your machine whenever you are rendering or whenever you're working within the scene previously when i showed the carpet tutorial a lot were complaining about the lags that you get because of the number of polygons that we shot this area so um if you want to get a bit more without actually taxing your computer that much use the roughness to um, tweak out how you want it to be now to get a quick overview of how our guy is looking we will switch over to our cycles turn over to gpu noise denoising we set it all up let me just make sure our light is also bright enough it's in an area set this to square 600 sorry so let 
so now that we have a quick light setup we will switch over to our cycle showing down so we're beginning to get some amounts but you can still see that still shows a bit more of the spacing but what we're going to do is let's test this out with um, a proper render scene and then you see the difference on the display down with the okay so let me just reduce the size of the resolution and let's go to render image now if we take a close look at this and this in the rendered scene you find there's more hair particles than in the display scene over here so that's because with the the child, children setting that we've applied over here we've told it to add more when in render but less when we are in the display um, viewport so this is what you will get when you go to view render so you can actually see way more um, particles so we can do a few more things that we can uh, add up here and one is the key i'll set it to radial and then with the radial amplitude will leave at 20 one part one flatness will bring up one frequency will increase to six and the shape will leave at 0 0.99 so this helps gives the hair uh, particles you know kind of like um not be too pointy but kind of like smoothing it out a bit so let's try it out once again so get a bit more smoothness on our teddy bear now if you take a closer look the part the face the snout the paws and the hands we can leave the hands and the paws as they are but let's say we want to get rid of all the fair particles around the face but still maintain the particles around it on the same pair objects and the way we can go about that is by using the vertex group what this does is before I do that, let's switch off our particles and come to the normal viewport. And what we'll do is put go over to our edit mode. And what this does is that um, we can now set up a vertex group for our model. So this helps us when you want to apply certain things to only specific areas within a vertex group of uh, objects. So we'll switch on to our vertex mode. And what we'll do is we'll tell it to add the new group and assign. So now we've assigned all this to this vertex group. If we go and select, it selects everything. But what we can do is we can select areas within the model that we do not want in our uh, selection or the group name what i would do is just call the fair area and what we'll do now is just come over to select and i'll use my select circle i'll add in just increase the size to about 50 which will help us select quickly oops well then let me just turn off my x-ray so i don't select the vertices behind also so what will happen is we'll select all around our teddy bear and, and just add this one here the areas you don't want the teddy bear to have fair let's say maybe we can 
I need to delete this one. So let's say we can add the ear. But the ear the challenge with that of that would be that because there's no much vertices and the number of children that we've applied to each of the particles, you'll still find quite a sizable amount of fur in this area, even though we told we tell it to not select or to not apply it over there. So let me just do so. Add this area also. Just add all these particles here. Only for testing sick, let's just add also the pause area to see how it the outlook comes out when we apply the vectors group to the areas we want only to be affected. What I'll do is once everything is selected, I'll come back again to deselect the ones that we do not need. So I'll deselect all these areas. Just make sure no of it is here. And lastly, we'll just add the under the feet okay, so from here and all the areas it's a control select all of it all these areas So now with all these selections, okay, let me just bring this one up. Now with all these selections, where we go to now will be remove. What does it does is that it will remove these vertices that we've just selected out of the selection that we made previously when we selected everything and applied to the fair area. So when we come back over here and just hit select, so now these are not part of the these are not part of the selection or this is not part of the vertex group that we have over here so with this done we'll come back to our particle system turn this on and i see that it's applied everything now to cut out these areas that we don't want we'll come over to vertex groups under density we'll come to fair area so now you can see that the face is now left out and if let's say we switch over to our render view, see that the face is there. But now if you take a closer look at the ear, because there were not enough vertices that we had to select, you can still see it's just a tiny portion of it that would not have the hair. But when we go into our main render, our main render view. So you can see that we have a selection, but when you check the ear, because there was not enough vertices, you can actually see that the hair particles are still um, covering because of the number of children that we've applied. So depending on how your computer can handle the, the machine, you can play around with the render amount or the display amount. Because normally with the Display. I can set this to 100 also so it will display the amount that would also be rendered but I think that would tax my computer a bit so for the purposes I would leave this so but this approach makes it a bit more easier to work on fair on your models or whatever you are doing than the previous method that we did on our uh, um, the carpet so with this, I can decide to go a bit higher on my resolution. Let's say 75% to render region. And we are still getting renders of less than even 30 seconds. Previously, our renders could go as high as much as 5 minutes to 10 minutes 
fair seeing oh it seems um, there was some bits of hair particles that we didn't select well we're going to work but um the cool thing about this um setup is that if we want to play around with the color all we have to do is switch into that texture paint mode and let's say we'll go with a different color let's say we'll apply some random colors around our body So what happens is if we switch over to our layout, what happens is we can use the color information that we have to color our uh, teddy bear. So um, this is just a quick beginner's tutorial on how to work with um, the particle system to create fair for your character, in this case our teddy bear. So, um, as a side note, um, I'm doing this tutorial because I just happened to have my first big boy in the month of November, and we just started buying him all these toys. So, the one toy that I just saw that I was really keen on getting for him, and that was this teddy bear. So, I was like, hey, why not try and then get one for the new model? So, I was playing around with the fair particles and found this approach to be a bit more economical on our CPU and GPU. Thought I would share it with everyone. So um here's our first tutorial for 2022. Um there'll be more stuff ahead of us. I wish you all a very successful 2022. Happy New Year and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.